Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. With Furiosa coming out this year, I want to look back on another George Miller epic about a loner who traveled across a barren wasteland against countless obstacles. Yeah, I know you know it's this. But admit, you forgot the same director did both of these. George Miller is one of the most uniquely versatile directors. He certainly has a distinct style, just count how many wide angle shots there are with high contrast colors but his subject matters vary a great deal. One minute he's doing a movie where the devil makes a woman puke up cherries, the next he's making Babe 2. And weirdly, that's the more messed up one. <laughs> so when Happy Feet came out in 2006, it both felt right because it was unexpected, but man, the, the Mad Max guy made this. This is that time too when Penguin movies were all over the place. So for such a distinct director to go this route, it puzzled many. However, it did still have the impressive size, heavy atmosphere, and stunning visuals that are often associated with his work. So, while it wasn't insanely weird, it was still weird. Regardless, this film turned out to be a big hit and even won the Oscar for Best Animated Film. Not that that means a whole lot, but we're gonna take a look at why. Let's dance on in! Yeah, the main character has a bow tie, I'm not using my A material for this. Let's take a look at Happy Feet. We open on... You don't have to be... Okay, I had hard enough time admitting I had a crush on her. Don't make me like penguins now. It turns out this is... And when I say hard enough time, I didn't mean... Eh, forget it. It turns out this is a mating ritual for penguins. Dancing and singing until they find the right... <clears throat> dancing partner. I'm feeling so lonely. I could die. I give the film credit. It establishes right away what you're in for. Dancing and singing penguins is nothing new, but having them look so realistic and singing a jukebox musical instead of original songs does give the impression you're in for something not entirely different, but not really the same either. It's like the film wants to take its time to let you know that it knows how weird it is. Ain't no particular song this is Memphis and Norma Jean, voiced by Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman, in bizarrely a less cartoony movie than the other one they starred in as we get a narration by Robin Williams. His mom and dad met in the usual way. The song became love. And thank God Memphis's voice was still in his prime because later, your face is not a face I would forget. But it's okay, he has a lot of passes. They have themselves a baby and the women go fishing while the men stay with the eggs. Each must take his turn against the icy blast if we are to survive the endless night. Okay, sometimes Miller's Mad Max shines through. The film also does a good job letting you know what penguins have to go through to survive. I mean, if they didn't learn how to tap dance, they wouldn't have landed so many film roles in the 60s. Give praise to the great one who put songs in our hearts and fish in our bellies! I don't know, just... Was this the vibe you were getting when you saw the advertisements for this? As much as I hated the influx of Penguin movies we got for a while, I think this one does benefit from having a directing team that didn't seem to care about the fad and was more like, you know, sometimes they tap dance and sometimes it's Dune. We don't care if you care, we're just venting out our weirdness. Time passes and the eggs start to hatch, giving birth to Mumble. What you doing with your feet? Oh, happy. I wouldn't do that around folks, son. Well, it just ain't Penguin, okay? We have a very strict, you foot loose, you foot loose. The wives return and Mumble is so excited he gets separated from his father. Mama! Oh, this is a very sluggish reworking of the stampede scene from Lion King, but I guess it's okay. Mama, Mama, just come to mommy. They eventually all meet up and are finally a family. I got something for you. Oh, I love the way she does that. <laughs> Ironic in a film called Happy Feet. That's the weird thing that gets somebody off. The kids are sent to school to be taught how to perfect their love song, the music that defines who they are. Don't push me cause I am close to the edge. Now we're at the part of Happy Feet most people thought this movie would be. Yes, I like that one. I could really get jiggy with that. For as timeless as most of this movie is, every once in a while likes to advertise how 1997 it is. Despite it coming out in 2006. <laughs> it turns out Mumble has no singing voice though, instantly making him an outcast. A penguin without a heart song is... 
Hardly a penguin at all. Unless we're being infiltrated by the puffins. We ain't doing nothing. They send him to an aggressive teacher to try and find his song, but all he wants to do is dance. It doesn't help either that this makes him stand out to the good feathers here. Flying boys, that's me. Need to flip a boy and the fish. What's this? Hey, Uto Pesto, we could bring guns! When asked what the tag on his leg is, the bird hilariously claims it was an alien abduction. They probe me, they tie me up, they strap me down, they take this pointy thing, and they stick it out to me! You sure it's not just the guy who likes chickens from Fallout? He manages to escape, but he still feels alone and unwanted. As he grows up into Elijah Wood, whose big cartoony eyes still aren't as big or cartoony as the actors, he requests to swim with the other graduates despite not graduating with a love song. You have it. Thank you, Mumble, but it's yours. I want you to have it. Mumble seems to hit it off with Gloria, played by Brittany Murphy. But it looks like some birds take his fishy gift. Ha! Oh, oh, oh. And they say penguins can't fly. Oh my god, I can't fly! Mumble? What? Take the <laughs> fish. Oh, okay. Yeah, like Galaxy Quest, there's an R-rated version of this movie. Mumble's awful voice, though, seems to get him kicked out of the group, once again leaving him isolated. Really isolated. He gets chased by a seal, but is quickly befriended by another group of penguins led by Ramon, voiced by Robin Williams. And I'm just gonna take a wild guess when the rest of the actors playing these penguins are these guys, and then Robin Williams is playing one named Ramon? Something's gonna stand out a bit. Without us, the chickens got no boom. What, you got something better to do? Let me tell something to you. You're gonna need a pebble. And yeah, I know technically they're just penguins, they don't have any race or anything, but... By that argument, that's just a cat and that's just a crow. Something still seems off. To be fair, I have seen far worse. Williams is still throwing his all into this role and nothing seems mean or vindictive. It's just something that probably wouldn't fly today. That's why it makes sense it's done with penguins. Jokes! <laughs> it also doesn't help that they're a little annoying. Uh, 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 you like it, you like it, you want it, I got it. Look at the feet, look at the feet, baby. Look at the feet, look at the feet, look at the that's not gonna be good for me. They use dancing as their love song though, so Mumble thinks he might fit it. While sliding down mountain though, they accidentally shook loose some construction equipment, which fascinates Mumble. They say if he wants answers, he should see a guru named Lovelace. Also played by Williams doing, I think Barry White? Now you're about to meet the one and only Lovelace in the flesh. Maybe Barry literally White? I don't know. He's a guru because he has plastic six-pack rings around his neck, which Mumble thinks might have been from the same aliens he heard about before. Lovelace doesn't answer his question, though, and says it's time to start mating season. I will retire now to my couch of perpetual indulgence. Okay, ladies, who's first? <laughs> Christ, this penguin's more horny than the Batman Returns penguin. Just the pussy I've been looking for. Mumble tells the others about Gloria and the ritual of their love song, so they come up with a plan to dub his voice. Sin on senor. And this is you. Con lagrimas. Oh. <laughs> what do you know? Yeah. At least you could have made a fitting and sung a Millie Vanilli song. Mumble tries combining her voice with his dancing, and moments like this are where the music works best. The mirror stares you in the face and says, baby, uh, uh. If they just sing a popular song, it's merely that, just them singing a popular song. But when they combine it with something different, like a unique sound or orchestration or idea, that's when I feel like the film really comes alive. The music transforms the scene because the scene transforms the music. Moments like this help the film stand out and not just be what, let's be honest, would otherwise be a direct-to-video movie. But yeah, it can kind of go back to that vibe too. Like, it's not awful, it's just every kid's movie you've seen now. It'd be like if the Dark Knight suddenly became Black Adam. Like, it's alright, but you were legit really good for a chunk of time there. But I will admit, it's kind of worth it just for this one scene where the group imitates every dance move that he does. I don't care what anyone says, that was cool. But the elders led by Noah, played by Hugo Weaving, find this most unorthodox and think this kind of behavior is causing the food shortage. She giveth and he can take it away! Huh? Wait a minute, happy feet can't cause a famine. It can produce a bomb, but not a famine. 
Even his father thinks he's causing harm and tells him to stop. Please, son. You can do this. It ain't so hard. Don't ask me to change, Pa. Because I can't. I'm always going to be the creepy smiling guy from the memes, and I accept that. So do I, for that matter. <laughs> he's cast out, but he's determined to discover for himself what's getting rid of most of the fish. Gloria, however, follows him on his journey. Oh, come on. As if you're not totally thrilled that I'm here. I can tell by your third flipper. Why do you think that penguin is so strategically placed? You stubborn, hippity hoppity fool! In one of the dumber scenes in the movie, he pretends he doesn't like her, so she'll turn back and not endanger her life. Don't like the women go hunting in this? I'm not sure it really adds up. Also, literally the first thing this character does is almost die, and that's all he does throughout the entire movie. Endanger her life? She'd be saving your life, dumbass! And no big surprise, sometimes Williams can be pretty damn funny. I can do this. I got to trick myself. Boy, look at that. What? Ah! Sometimes I hate how something so stupid can make me laugh, but it still makes me laugh. They approach two elephant seals, one of them voiced by Steve Irwin. Catch you up as soon as look at you. Waste every living thing in their path. Okay, I knew he could act badass. I didn't know he could sound badass. And they're encouraged to venture into the unknown to find the aliens. Christ, this film can be randomly beautiful! They encounter the human world but are cornered by killer whales. Oh, what? No Jackson song here? So the good news is... The bad news is... He spat out, though, and Mumble decides to head out alone to find the humans. Hey! It's me, Lovelace! I gotta clarify, cause there are two of me! I'm gonna be telling your story, Happy Feet, long after you dead and gone. Just, again, the shorter version. He finds a fishing ship and follows it, even long after it disappeared from his sight. He ventured further than any of us had gone before, beyond all hope of return. Not gonna lie, a part of me almost thought it would end there. I don't even know if it'd be that great an ending, but I'd give it an extra star and have the quote be, Dude, that was the most artistically pleasing way to piss off an audience I've ever seen. He eventually washes up on a beach where he's picked up by a car and placed in a zoo. When he finally saw aliens up close, they were just as the school had described. So, I don't know if this is a personal thing or if a lot of people think this, but... I really think it's distracting when a CG movie puts in real people. Sometimes it can work. In Lego Movie, it's all a kid's fantasy, so it makes sense to see a real kid there. But here, the penguins look real-ish, but they're still clearly animated. Like, if they want to do a Final Fantasy thing, I could get behind that, but having real people in a CG movie is like having that neon sock puppet in Lost in Space. The two styles very obviously don't go. What is this place? You're in heaven, Dave. A lot of the penguins think they're in heaven, which, considering their circumstances, I can see why they would think that. But Mumble knows he's trapped and starts to lose his mind waiting there too long. Oh, Ma. Ma. Also, what a bad great part to end it, and that one I would totally get behind. <laughs> the kid tells him the adult, and soon everyone is blown away by his move, Bustin. As you probably put together, this gets a lot of attention, and the humans return him to his habitat to see if there's others. What to do? Dance! I do really dig this climax where the elders are singing while the younger people dance. They offset each other quite beautifully. Yes! Yes! Call on the wisdoms! Let the world tremble! Most unorthodox! Even Mumble and his father seem to make amends as people come over the mountain to see the amazing happy feet before them. You see, <laughs> first there was just one, now there's thousands of them. Are they trying to tell us something? They're trying to say merchandising, merchandising! The world argues and bickers until they agree they shouldn't fish there anymore and they should preserve these amazing creatures. And remember why I said some of those random moments would be a weird place to stop? Well, the place it does stop does seem rather random. Yeah, that's kind of the whole movie, isn't it? Amazing moment, amazing moment, and then, eh, good enough. Really can't sum it up better than that. It's such a strange movie, both for how conventional it is and for how unconventional it is. 
when it's a straight up family film, it's decent, I guess. You know, like kids would like it fine, and parents I don't think would be that annoyed by it. But when it wants to be a surreal, atmospheric epic, it not only pulls it off, but it pulls it off on its own terms. It's just not done throughout the majority of it. There's scenes in the movie I adore, but it's not enough to get me to adore the entire film. But at the same time, I didn't even think that was a possibility. This movie tries bizarrely harder than it needs to in so many areas. So when it just does what's expected of it, it's not really a letdown, it's just, in a weird way, kinda jarring. I guess the film did want to make money and entertain families, so I can't be too hard on it for going the more traditional route most of the time. It's just I, like many, didn't even know there was another option with the more surreal stuff. I guess you can call it okay with amazingly done moments, elevating it to above average, I guess? It's a hard film to put in a box, but like I've mentioned before, sometimes I prefer those films. They may not be perfect, but they certainly dance to a unique beat. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember, so you don't have to. I could really get jiggy with that.